Kataib Hezbollah, the Iran-backed terror group, has found itself back in the headlines as it causes even more violence, like the killing of three American soldiers. They're also blamed for the kidnapping of a Princeton doctoral student. That kidnapping and her sister's desperate attempts to bring her home is unveiling deep ties between the terrorist organization and the Iraqi government. Our Jay O'Brien has this in-depth investigation in tonight's Prime Focus. The aftermath of a U.S. drone strike earlier this month. Inside that burning car, the Pentagon says, was a top commander of Kataib Hezbollah. This U.S. strike, part of a series of reprisals. After the more than 170 attacks on American troops that group and other Iran-backed militias have carried out since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. One attack in January, killing three service members at a remote base in Jordan. Considered a terrorist group by the U.S., Kataib Hezbollah gets its marching orders from Iran, which would ultimately like to see U.S. troops get out of Iraq. It's a centuries-old story, a bloody geopolitical struggle for power and prominence. But this time, Elizabeth Surkoff is caught in the middle. This was the last known image of what appears to be Elizabeth, a hostage video released on the Iraqi TV network Al Rabia last November. In it, she falsely claims to be both an Israeli spy and a CIA agent. But what she's saying isn't as important as the fact this video exists. Because this is the first proof Emma Surkoff had that her sister, Elizabeth, was alive. After she was kidnapped, both the U.S. and Israeli government say, by Kataib Hezbollah, seven months before this video was released. What was it like seeing that? Roller coaster of emotions. I mean, she's, she's alive. Um, and... She looked afraid. She looked terrified. She doesn't scare easily at all, and the sheer terror in her eyes was just gut-wrenching. Emma and Elizabeth are inseparable, best friends, just a year apart. That's us. Emma lives here in the U.S. Elizabeth is a Princeton doctoral student here on a student visa with dual Russian and Israeli citizenship. She traveled from her home in New Jersey to Baghdad, because, as her sister tells us, Elizabeth is passionate about researching the Middle East directly at the source. But then, one day in March of last year, Elizabeth disappeared while leaving a cafe in the Iraqi capital. I don't even know how to experience parts of my life. There is something so fundamentally missing. It's like the world is upside down. Why do you think they took her? I, I mean, I don't know for certain. Um, probably because they somehow figured out um, that she's Israeli and Jewish. She's been gone for a year. Almost. What gives you hope that she will ever be released? Just that I have to stay hopeful. I just, there's no other choice. Can I ask you a really hard question? How do you know she's alive? We're not twins, but I guess we're as close to twins as people who aren't twins can be. And I know in my gut that she is alive, and I know that she is trusting me to get her out of there. That's why Emma is here on Capitol Hill, pushing U.S. policymakers to lean on Iraq to get her sister out. She believes Iraqi officials hold the keys to Elizabeth's survival because of the deep, controversial ties between the Iraqi government and that terrorist group holding Elizabeth, Kataib Hezbollah. A connection, she says, many Americans may not realize exists. They're roaming the halls of power in Baghdad freely and happily. They're not hiding, they're not, they don't feel shame. And they for have what your done. Yes, that's the part that just drives me crazy. <laughs> Kataib Hezbollah is considered the most powerful part of a group called the PMF, or the Popular Mobilization Forces, a constellation of militias cobbled together in Iraq a decade ago. For years, they were used to fight ISIS, and after its defeat, their strength within the country only grew. They now boast a budget in the billions from the Iraqi government, 
And some Kataib, Hezbollah, and other Iran-backed fighters now have official roles in the Iraqi establishment, sometimes compared to a kind of Iraqi National Guard. They are part and parcel of the Iraqi state and government. Um, they are recognized forces within the Iraqi constitution. There are some PMF commanders that actually have a presence within the Iraqi army itself. Dr. Ron Jalalvin has been studying Iran-backed militias in Iraq for more than a decade. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that you've got a dysfunctional um, Iraqi, formal Iraqi security establishment that has effectively been instrumentalized and co-opted by these militia groups. And it gets even more complex. To fight ISIS, the U.S. sent the Iraqi military hundreds of millions in guns, ammo, and even tanks. And experts like Alaldin are concerned some of those weapons wound up with hostile Iran-backed militia groups. Like here in 2017, when Kataib Hezbollah fighters reportedly posted video operating an American-made M1 Abrams tank. This Inspector General report to Congress says the State Department acknowledged as many as nine M1 Abrams tanks had fallen into the hands of Iranian-backed militias in Iraq. But to prevent the return of ISIS, the U.S. continues to send millions of dollars in weapons to Iraq's Ministry of Defense. So we went to the Pentagon Good afternoon. to ask how they're making sure those weapons aren't ending up in the hands of the same Iranian-backed militants who kidnapped Elizabeth and are now attacking U.S. troops. Is the U.S. government concerned that weapons and other security assistance we send to the Iraqi Ministry of Defense could wind up in the hands of PMF and Kataib Hezbollah fighters? Well, we're confident in our um, end-use monitoring that we have in Iraq, so I think we're pretty confident in um, our coordination when it comes to the Iraqi security forces. She went on to tell us the official position of the Department of Defense is that terrorist group holding Elizabeth and attacking U.S. troops, Kataib Hezbollah, or KH, is not part of that Iraqi government-backed paramilitary organization, the PMF. Cage is not part of the PMF. But this 2023 report from inspectors general for the Department of Defense and State lists Kataib Hezbollah as one of at least four Iran-aligned militias that have attacked U.S. forces, while also being part of the PMF, an umbrella group of militias that receives funding from the Iraqi government. Is it fair to say that the same paramilitary groups that are shooting at American soldiers in Iraq right now are also part, in a way, of the Iraqi government. Well, absolutely. And that presents a tricky conundrum uh, for both the uh, Iraqis, but also you know, the, the Americans. And Emma firmly believes the U.S. could help free her sister by leaning on the Iraqis, which could then talk to Kataib Hezbollah. The only thing standing between her and freedom is a stern enough phone call from Washington, D.C. to Baghdad telling the Iraqi government, you need to get her out. This is not sustainable. She cannot stay there. Do you think the Iraqi government knows where she is? Yes. I know that they know who to ask if they don't right this moment. In a July statement to Reuters, the Iraqi government confirmed it was aware of Elizabeth Surkoff's kidnapping and was investigating the incident. Despite multiple requests from ABC News, no Iraqi official agreed to speak on the record to us about Elizabeth Surkoff or Kataib Hezbollah. But in Baghdad, the influence of Kataib Hezbollah and other Iran-backed militias is only growing. Kataib Hezbollah has now promised to stop attacking U.S. troops to, quote, prevent embarrassment to the Iraqi government. All while Elizabeth Surkoff nears one year in captivity, caught in the middle. I am never going to stop until I have her back. The only question is, how many obstacles will I have to overcome to get her back? Our thanks to Jail Brian for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.